Hello and welcome. In the last video, we had a discussion about the introductory part of UVM Braille. We discussed one question and the question was why backdoor access is faster compared to the front door access. And also we discussed about the REG model which consists of register database and adapter layer. Also, we discussed the responsibility of adapter layer and uh, the predictor and different types of predictions also we have discussed. Now, in this video, we will try to understand how we can define a register and memory class. For example, if our DOT has one register and one memory in it, how we can define them using the OVM graph. Before moving to that, let me give you some information related to that. Related to UVM RAL database. Okay. So as you can see over here, RAL database will have the pair of desired and needed board, as you can see over here. So for example, if our DUT has some number of registers, here you can see R0, R1, up to RM. So for all registers, there is a pair of desired and mirrored value. The database, register database will contain. Okay. And for memory, there is no any desired and memory. Uh, there is there is no any desired and mirrored value. Okay. So what is desired value? Already we have discussed. Let me give you a point here for that. Desired value is what we want in the hardware register next okay and the mirror value is what we think in the hardware register now so for example this register r0 has a value 5 so this mirror value will also contain a value 5 which is an exact mirror image of the ut register r0 okay so what is desired value desired value is what we want in the hardware register next and mirror value is what we think in the hardware register now. Okay. And this desired and mirrored value will be updated by the predictor at the end of front door, right, and read access. So what is front door and back door already we discussed in the previous video. Okay. So if we want to de define a register model, so this register model has seven building block classes in it. What are those? We will see over here. So it has a register and the base class for that register is UVM bridge. So if register is there, for that particular register, some fields are there. Okay. Register field. And the base class for this register field is UVM bridge field. Okay. So as you can see over here, this is a register we are considering for our example here. So this register has four fields as you can see here mode enable debug enable parity enable and desert so this register is of 32 bit okay 0 to 31 as you can see over so for this register some fields are there and if there are multiple registers in the dud optionally we can define register file for that okay so the base class for this register file is uvm bridge file and if our dut has one memory we are considering one memory over here so for that we need to define uh, a memory which is extending from uvm mem so this is a base class for defining a memory okay and as you can see over here register block has one map and the base class for that map is uvm map and this map will contain the offset address of all registers and memories along with a pointer for adapter and sequencer. We will see that map later. And this register block which integrate all registers and memories and map in it. So the base class for that register block is UVM Ridge block. Okay. So now we will try to understand what how to define a register 
class and memory class okay so now we are considering this register which has four fields in it and which is a 32 bit wide in nature okay? the width of this register is 32 and we are considering this memory okay a simple a sample memory which has a depth of 8 and width is 32 bit <clears throat> so now uh, we i will show you how you can define a register class okay so as you can see over here class our own register you can give any name and which is extending from UVM range. This is a base class. Okay. And we have to define the field for that particular register. So as we discussed, it has four fields. So we can define them as a UVM range field, reserve, parity enable, debug enable, and mode enable. And if we want, we can declare them as a rand. So in the future, if we are calling a randomized method, this field can randomize. And whatever we are defining as a part of UVM rel, we need to define uh, we need to define a one UVM object details. So we need to register that particular class with the object details factory registration method. And it is an object, its default constructor expecting only one argument. And whenever we are calling super dot new apparent constructor, for that we have to provide some information. What is that information? First is a name. Okay. Then another is 32 bit, which is nothing but a width of that register. So as we discussed, this register has a 32 bit wide. Okay, so width is 32 bit, and we don't want any coverage for this particular register. So we are providing a UV no coverage enabler here. So here we cannot, we, we are not providing any in, in additional information here, like what is the, the width of this reserve field what is the position of this reserve field and all other fields so for that we are taking help of build method so as you can see function wide build in that we are creating the fields first using practice create method okay and we are calling a configure method for each field and within the parenthesis we are providing configuration information for each field. So as you can see, we are providing some nine arguments in the parenthesis. So the first, this is a register field name, and this is a configure method. And within parenthesis, we are providing the information like first, first uh, argument is like a parent, which is nothing but a this class only. Another one is the size of that particular field. As you can see, this reserve field is of 29 bit. As you can see over here, 31 down to 3 is 29. And the position of LSB for that reserve field is 3, as you can see over here, 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay. And type of access, so it has read, write access, or read only access, or write only access. So this particular field has a read only access. The next argument is volatile, whether this field is volatile in nature or not. So in the parenthesis, if we are providing one, then this particular field is volatile in nature. Another one is a reset. What is a you know reset value? It may be one or zero. The next is has reset. <clears throat> you can consider this has reset as a uh, you know a hard reset. Okay, so it has one or zero. So one means it has a hard reset or zero means it, it doesn't have a hard reset. So this has reset, we can define. The next one is, is rand, which is one or zero. So one means uh, this particular field is randomizable or not. So for example, if we are defining this as a zero, even though if we are declaring this as a rand here, so if we are defining is rand is equal to zero, so this particular field cannot be randomized in the future if we are calling a randomized method for this particular field. And the next ninth argument is uh, this particular bit is individually accessible or not. So with this, within parenthesis, if we are providing one, then this particular field is accessible, individually accessible. Okay. So for all other fields, we can um, specify something like this configuration 
information using this configure method. So this is an order base which already I have commented and this is a name base. Okay. So it is better to use name base if we are defining this build method by our own. Okay. So the next class is UVM memory. Okay, you can see over here we are considering the depth is 8 and width is 32. So as you can see RAL, we are calling RAL mem. Okay, our own name extending from UVM mem. And it also has, uh, it is an also an object class. So we have to use object detail micros over here. And in uh, the function new, we have to, you know, provide one argument because it is an object in the UVM base class hierarchy. And then we have to provide whenever we are calling the parent new method, we have to provide some information. So first is name, then another one is a depth of this particular memory, which is eight. And next one is the width, which is a 32 bit. Okay. And type of access, whether it has read access only, read only access, write only access or read write access. And the fourth argument is UVM no coverage. So, so we don't want any access. Uh, additional coverage for this memory. <laughs> Apart from this function new, no, uh, nothing is required here for defining whenever we are defining a memory. So as you can see, for register, we have to define the build method, but for the memory, just if uh, factory registration macro and the function new, except this, nothing is required. So as you can see, in the register block, you will find this configure method is a bit difficult to define meaning for example right now we are considering only one memory and one registers in our DUT. so for example in in real scenario uh, the DUT is uh, very complex meaning it has some uh, you know n number for example 1000 registers in it so for writing this all these things you know writing the build method and writing the uh, you know all this information manually it become a bit complicated for us. There are two reasons. First, first one, we need to sit and we need to write all those things by our by self manually. And second thing is that as a human being, we are you know habitual to make a mistake, so that we can make uh, may, maybe we can make mistakes to define them. So for defining these kind of thing, every ED tool has developed some uh, you know uh, automatic techniques to define them. So instead of defining them manually, we can take a help of, uh, you know, EDA tools. So what those EDA tools do, for them we need to provide some, you know, information, register uh, information. We need to provide some, you know, information of the registers and memories in the standard format. Uh, one IP exact standard format is there. So in that we need to provide all this information and the tool itself uh, will generate the register model for us. No need to write them manually. Okay, so with this uh, we have covered how to define a UVM registers and memory if our DUT has one register and one memory. Okay. In the next video, we will try to understand how to define the UVM uh, register block uh, for this DUT if it, it has one register and one memory. Also, we will try to see how to define a predictor and adapter and all in the next video. So with this, I hope you have understood the concept of uh, register database Okay, and register model what uh, the register model has and how to define a register and memory class in UVM GL. So with this, I hope you have understood all concepts and I also hope you enjoyed this video. So thanks for watching. Thank you.